because this is probably the one aspect of having a child in German Kita that has made me feel like I'm just a bad mom. Hi, we're Ashton and Jonathan, and along with our son Jack, we're the Black Forest family. Living in Germany since 2013, follow us along on our weekly adventures of living, working, and raising a family abroad all the while building our dream house in the Black Forest. Hi guys, good morning. Welcome back to our channel. If you're new here, my name's Ashton and along with my husband, Jonathan, and our son, Jack, we're the Black Forest family. Now, about three months ago, we filmed a video talking to you all about the differences between German Kita and the American daycare system. Because during that time, Jack was actually going through what's called the Eingewohnung period, or essentially the acclimatization time where kids actually become familiar with spending all day at a German Kita. However, since that video, three months have gone by and we have a lot to talk about. So in today's video, we're going to be discussing how that's actually been going for Jack now that he's been there full time. That'll include some ups and some downs, but overall, we also wanted to talk to you about what this process has been like raising children abroad as an immigrant family, specifically by introducing our child to the German Kita system. So let's go ahead and dive right in. Okay, so I feel like the only real way to start off this video is to be 100% honest and upfront. And I think I should probably title this section, The Plague Upon Our Family, because that has essentially been the theme of the last three months of our lives. I'm sure as any parent who's had children in school or in daycare is well aware of, little ones tend to pick up every little bug and virus that they come into contact with. And then they so generously bring that home and share it with the rest of the family. And really, since putting Jack into Kita three months ago, we've been in kind of a constant state of illness. At least one of us in the family is always sick. So if you've watched any of our previous videos from the last three months, it's, um, it's been a challenge to edit because, well, you, you'll see. It's the number of times we... Test one, two, three. <coughs> yeah, so as you just saw, for the last nine weeks, our family has made many, many trips to either the Kinder Arts or our local house arts for Jonathan and I. From small colds to full-blown infections, we've kind of seen it all. So for example, in early November, Jack actually picked up something called RSV, which stands for the respiratory syncytial virus. And essentially it's an infection of the lungs and the bronchial airways. But because it's a virus, there's nothing you can really do except wait it out. Obviously, Jack couldn't go to Kita. He wasn't going to infect the rest of the class. So that meant that for the last nine weeks as well, Jonathan and I have each had to sort of take turns, taking time off of work, because if he wasn't sick, then we were sick. And even when he's sick and we're healthy, nobody in our house is sleeping. Um, he's sick. My best friend's sister's boyfriend's brother's girlfriend heard from this guy who knows this kid is going with the girl who saw Ferris pass out at 31 Flavors last night. I guess it's pretty serious. Now, to be fair, this isn't something that is solely a German Kita phenomenon. This would happen even if we put Jack into a daycare in the United States. But if we're actually talking about what our actual experience has been like putting our child into daycare, I feel like I would be remiss if I didn't at least address the fact that bringing home illnesses and bugs is something that's really just sort of been a constant since we started this whole process. Now, to be fair, I really want this video to also be talking about all of the positives that we've actually experienced from putting Jack into Kita. For example, Jack has really flourished in this new environment. He's been making friends and he just loves his caretakers at Kita. It's 
actually pretty cute. Um, his Kita has an intercom system. So every morning you ring the bell, one of the ladies comes over the intercom and says, Guten Morgen or hello. And then you say who you are, your name, and they unlock the door and let you in. Um, Jack has picked up on this, that you click the button, they speak, then I speak. And for maybe the last three weeks or so, it's super cute, but every morning I ring the doorbell, they say, good morning. And then Jack just yells straight into the intercom. Ah! Yeah. Every morning it's, ah, hello, Jack. <laughs> and they let us in, it's, it's just really cute. But honestly, it also makes me feel really good as his mom that when I drop him off at Kita, he's happy to be there. He's excited to play with his friends and Thankfully, dropping him off at Kita every morning isn't a traumatic experience for him. He doesn't cry, he doesn't get sad, he is just excited to go see his friends. And you know, also while he's been in daycare, it's also really benefited him developmentally. Because his Kita has a pretty good range of ages, all the way from 10 months to about two and a half years, Jack has really taken to a lot of the older kids and his caretakers at Kita have told me that he watches the older kids and tries to mimic them. And we really think that that has truly helped his ability to walk. He's so interested in what they're doing, playing puzzles, playing games. And even now on the weekends, when we take him to the park and go play, he is fearless with the other kids, even the older ones. He'll have no problem crawling or toddling right up to them and playing with whatever they're playing and interacting in a group setting. So I really think that from a developmental standpoint, he has really benefited from his German Kita. Okay, so the next thing, we were actually asked a ton in the comment section on our first video on German Kita was, is Jack learning German? To be fair, he's just about 13 months old. So at the moment, he really knows maybe four or five words. The main ones being Mama, Dada, and Georgia. Our dog, Georgia. Um, but we have noticed recently that when you talk to him and ask him questions, he is actually starting to respond with no or yeah, yeah. Jack, are you ready to go to Kita? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> We've actually been kind of picking up that when he says yeah, it really is almost an interesting hybrid between yeah, like in American English, and yeah like with a J as in German, because he hears that all day at Kita, Monday through Friday. So while he hasn't really said any true German words yet, I really feel like we're probably gonna be there in no time. And as immigrant parents, again, we're super excited to have him actually learn German from native German speakers. You know, and also in that last video, I touched upon some of the philosophical or pedagogical differences between German Kitas and American daycare systems. And now again, that we've been in this system, kind of immersed in it for a few months, I thought it would actually be good if I revisited some of those principles and talked about our firsthand experiences with them. Now, the first of which is actually the eating habits and setting that they actually enjoy meals or snacks in a German Kita. So interestingly enough, when I was 16 or 15 or 16, I actually worked at an American daycare. Um, and one of the things that I very much remember is that in the toddler room, the one-year-old, two-year-old room, they had these tables that looked like this. Essentially, it's kind of a half circle shaped table with built in high chairs for the little kids to eat. Now it's great from the caretaker's perspective because you can just sort of sit in the middle and spoon feed all the little ones as they go. But what's been really interesting is that in Jack's Kita, they have a table that looks like this. It's essentially just a tiny version of the adult tables that you and I would sit at and eat. And it's been really cool to see that Jack, even as a 13 month old, 
has really picked up to table manners. And that includes not only learning how to use some of the eating utensils, but also watching the other kids eat, trying new foods, and learning just basic table manners of how to behave while sitting at a table eating as a group. Now, Jonathan and I do practice this also at home. We recently purchased a new high chair that is pretty cool because it's nothing like I had when I was a kid, but essentially it's a high chair that you can either keep a table tray on it or you can pull it right up to the dining room table and he can eat with us as a family. Yes, yeah, yeah. But we know as his parents that these behaviors of how to behave basically when you're sitting at a table eating is something that you have to practice regularly and make it part of their everyday routine. Now actually, speaking of food, the food that Jack's Kita actually serves all the children is from a bio-organic producer in Freiburg. Unfortunately for Jack, he still has a milk protein allergy. I had it when I was a little one and hopefully he will grow out of it. So most of the days I end up packing his lunch just to make sure that the foods he's eating are safe for him. However, two days a week, his Kita actually features a vegetarian or vegan option. And even on the days when there's not a vegetarian or vegan option, most of the time, the sauce, which usually has milk or cheese in it, can be left on the side. So his teachers have been wonderful in exposing him to new foods, but also working with us as his parents to help accommodate this semi-unusual food allergy. We know that that's not necessarily easy for them to do, and we really appreciate it. But nonetheless, whether they're cooking Jack's special food or they're heating up food for the rest of the children, I also thought that it was pretty cool that at his German Kita, their kitchen is really actually seen as an extension of the other play and learning areas that he gets to experience. Like I said, I worked at a daycare in the US and they had a kitchen, but it was a separate room where children were not allowed to be in at all. But at Jack's Kita, not only is the kitchen where the little ones actually sit and eat, but they actually get to see how their food is prepared and participate in small ways that they can by helping to learn to cut up some of the vegetables or fruits. And again, sort of seeing how that process of creating a meal takes place. So it's again, another learning opportunity for the little ones that we think is actually really cool. Okay, so moving right along. One of the things again that we talked about in our very first video was how German Kitas really place an emphasis on getting the kids outdoors year round. And for the last three months, we've really sort of seen the weather kind of head downhill as we move into the winter season. Now granted, if the weather is really bad, really cold, really wet, just not fun to be in, they'll keep the kids inside for the most part. But at least two or three times a week, they still make an effort to get the little ones outside, whether that's playing in the garden that's actually attached to the Kita or taking them on city excursions, they really expose the little ones to life outdoors. So for example, just this past week, they not only visited the local city library, but they also took the kids down to the Dreisam, which is the local river that runs through Freiburg, to see the water, see the nature, and get some frische Luft or fresh air to just get outside and have fun. But again, because we are in the winter season now, we have had to adapt some of those outdoor clothes that are a requirement for Kita, like we showed you in the last video. For the winter time, we're required to actually purchase him the same type of rain pants, except now they're actually fleece insulated so that they can be worn even if it's snowing outside. In addition, we also purchased him a waterproof ski jacket, as well as some warm gloves and a nice hat. But again, I think it's just really cool that in the German Kita system, they definitely subscribe to the theory that there's no such thing as bad weather, only bad clothing. Because at least from my experience growing up in the United States, especially when I was a little one, we really didn't go outside in the wintertime, unless we were older, like in elementary school. The little ones at a daycare center, if it was close to freezing, forget about it. They just kept the kids inside. 
It was only if it was warmer and sunny that they would take the kids outside to play. But here in Germany, even when it's really cold, they just bundle them up extra warm and take them outside because again, being in the nature is so important for their development. All right, now if I'm actually gonna make a video where we talk about what the experience has really been like as immigrant parents, as a family really, with a little one in Kita, then I should also probably talk at least a little bit about what that experience has been like for Jonathan and I as his parents. And honestly, something that's been a, a challenge for us. There's really no other way to put it. So in the United States, daycares are typically open from 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. Now, this is specifically set up that way because if you're a full-time working parent, you have to be able to have the time to drop your kid off at daycare and get to work on time at 8 a.m. and work till five o'clock and then drive to the kid's daycare and pick them up. But at least in our experience, full-time daycare is 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Technically. And I say technically because this is probably the one aspect of having a child in German Kita that has made me feel like I'm just a bad mom. And that's the fact that even though we enrolled him in full-time daycare, the vast majority of parents pick their children up at three o'clock, maybe four o'clock at the latest, but there's only maybe one or two other parents who ever do that, and it's not on a regular basis. And that's actually been super challenging for Jonathan and I. I've been pretty open about the fact that doing this YouTube thing isn't my full-time job. I'm a full-time PhD student, and for the past three months, I've been working overtime to get my dissertation finished. In fact, I actually have to submit my dissertation to my supervisor by the time this video goes live. So I've been really working a lot to get this project wrapped up. And Jonathan, having a job with an American company, Oftentimes they schedule his meetings until six o'clock at night because they're on the East Coast and they have to make sure that they have meetings that sync up with completely different time zones. So a lot of the times those pickups and drop-offs fall on me. And I feel really guilty because if I drop him off right at 8 a.m., right when they open, he's the first kid there. And still by the time I get him undressed and drop him off and walk back home. It's already 8.30, quarter to nine. So then I work really, really hard until about three or four o'clock because I can't work any later because I feel really bad. And so I go pick him up from Kita and he's usually one of the last two, three kids there. And I come home and I maybe only get five or six hours of work done. And again, don't get me wrong, I cherish that time with Jack. I love that I get to do pickups and I ask him about his day and then we come home and we play and we make dinner together. Hi, I missed you. Hi. <laughs> but it's tough when you're a full-time working parent. It means that oftentimes after Jack goes to bed, I still have to sit down and work for a couple of hours. And that takes time away from Jonathan and I's relationship and the time that we actually get to spend together. So I hope that in the coming months when my dissertation is submitted and done, this will become less and less of an issue. But really, it's been kind of interesting that although it is a full-time, full-day daycare, the vast majority of the parents in our group leave their children there for maybe only a couple of hours longer than the half day group. But I'd really actually like to hear from you and hear how your family actually managed this conflict between daycare hours and working hours. So please let me know down in the comment section below. Okay, so this leads me to the final question that I'm sure you're all wondering is, do we regret putting Jack in a German Kita? And the answer to that is an overwhelming, absolutely not. For us, the costs of him getting sick and the conflict between the work and Kita hours really for us are outweighed by the wonderful benefits that he has by being there. Like I mentioned, Jack is a super active little boy. He's everywhere all the time. Yeah. 
He's really flourished in this environment and we adore the caretakers that he has at his Kita. But you know, I'd actually, again, love to hear from you. We know that choosing to put your child in Kita isn't for everybody. And many families choose to do half day care or even to stay home longer with their little ones or hire a tagesmutter if, if that's what works for you and your family. But again, we'd love to hear from you on what your experience has been like raising a little one here in Germany and what you think of these differences between the American daycare system and German Kita. And again, guys, as always, if you enjoyed today's video, we would love it if you hit that thumbs up button. And for more content from the Black Forest family, hit that subscribe button. So until next time, tschüss. Jack, are you ready to go to Kita? Yeah. yeah?